you to have your way in the service. Move, God, how you want to move, God. Do what you want to do, God. We are expectant. We are anticipating, God, that you will come in and sweep over this house, oh God. Be glorified in every praise. Hallelujah. Be glorified in every hallelujah. Be glorified in every thank you, Jesus. Be glorified as we give you praise. Father, you're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy of all the glory. And God, we give it to you, God. We give it to you freely, God. We pray against every wall, every restriction that, that the enemy wants to present. But we go forth in your name with boldness, with confidence to bless the name of the Lord.
serve a great and awesome God. Hallelujah.
cry out for me. I won't let a rock cry out for me. I will bless him. I will give him glory. I will give him honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will cry out. I will cry out. I will give him what he's due. Come on, let's give him what he's due right here, 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 right here. Hallelujah.
Well, if you got a reason to praise him, can, I'll give you about 15 to 20 seconds right here to insert praise right here. It's all right. They may be looking at you strange, but they don't understand your story. Go ahead and give them some praise. If, if they won't praise you, I know you'll praise them. If, if everybody else around won't do it, I know that you do it. Father, you've been so good. You've been so kind. You've interrupted my story for my good. We honor you in this place because you are such a big and mighty God. We honor you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Mm, that's good. Hey, good morning, Anthem Church. How y'all doing this fine morning? Hey, before y'all take y'all seats, go ahead and slap a couple of people, high five, and say, God has been so good to me. Yeah, yeah. So, so good to see so many smiling faces in the building. Good morning, good morning, one more time. Can we make some noise for our online community, the folks that are joining us on the other side of the cameras? We thank y'all so much for tuning in, whether it's live or catching the, the live, the, the restream. We thank you for joining us. Hey, my name is Christian, and uh, I'm on the staff here. Uh, and I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. Um, we would like to take this opportunity to welcome some really dope people. It's our first time guests. So if you're joining us for the very first time, do you mind just doing like a royalty wave right where you are so we can recognize you? You don't have to stand up or anything. Make some noise, you guys. Oh, yeah. I already had the pleasure of meeting Ray and Tina and Chris in the back. It's so good to see so many new faces. Um, that we would love to connect with you right after this service. Well, number one, thank you for giving us the opportunity to uh, come and hang out with us. Uh, we are very intentional to create a space where you can just experience the presence of God. And I know that you've done that already. So right after service, we'll love to connect with you. Uh, it's a QR code that's right there in front of you. Pull out your phone, scan it, uh, fill it out. Or if you don't have a phone, that's totally fine. It's a card that's right there. Fill it out and turn it into a table in the lobby area. We got a free T-shirt. Oh, yeah. Uh, a nice free T-shirt. Somebody say free. Free Anthem Church swag T-shirt that we'll love to give to you. Uh, that uh, uh, just a just a gift saying thank you for joining us. Let's give it up for our first time guests one more time. It feels like it's a time of prayer and fasting, man. It's, uh, it's beautiful to be in the house of the Lord. I'm, I'm excited about the word of God that's about to come forth. But before we get to that, it is offering time in the building. We truly get excited about partnering uh, with God in our finances. It's two ways that you can give. First way is online at weareanthemchurch.com forward slash give. Just a quick little disclaimer, we moved to a new giving platform. Many people have received an email, so it may look a little different. Uh, it will redirect you to our new platform called Pushpay, but it's okay. It's us. It's, it's, it's totally fine. Uh, but that is where we are online. Uh, if you are not able to give online, you're here in person. It's an envelope that's right there. You can throw cash or check inside of it. And as you exit outside the doors, it's a, a nice little container that says offering. And you can deposit it right inside that box. As you guys get ready for the offering, uh, it, I just got one quick promotion for you. Well, it's not, yeah, it's going to be one quick promotion. Uh, it's crew and freedom track season. Crew and Freedom Track season is upon us, and I have my friend Tanaka J coming out. Give Tanaka J a hand. She is our senior director of discipleship, and she's going to chat with us this morning about Crew and Freedom Track. Shall we? Give it up for Tanaka J one more time. No, you got to cross the leg like that when you start interviewing. Oh, that's what we got to do. Yes, we do. Yes, ma'am. I got to go to Anthem Fit, y'all. That's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tanaka J, uh, we've heard crew and f crews and freedom track, the terminology, like, all the time. Um, and many people may have a question mark in the back of their head. Yes. What is crew and freedom track? Can you just give us a little bit more of an explanation? 
Absolutely, Pastor Sam and Pastor Christian. Uh, well, Fr Freedom Track and Cruise are a part of our discipleship pathway here. You guys will hear us talk a lot about our mission being to lead people. Come on, y'all. Lead people to know Christ and make Christ known. Y'all better get it. All right, y'all get it. So part of our discipleship pathway is to know, grow, and make. To know Christ, to make him known. Did I say that right? Yes. To know Christ, <laughs> to grow in Christ, and to make him known, right? So in the grow part of our pathway is where our freedom track and our crews fall. So freedom track is just what the first word of it says. Those classes are there to give you access to freedom. Did you say All freedom? of those classes. Freedom, right. right? Freedom in your personal finances, freedom in your physical fit, freedom in uh, your emotions and your, uh, your, your soul, freedom in every area. We got six, we got a six pack of classes, y'all, right? So those six, six pack classes, I'm still working on that, it's Anthem Fit, <laughs> Anthem Fit Financial Peace. The class actually brings you financial peace. It's helped you to get rid of debt, to cancel debt, and to learn to steward your finance as well. And then what we've got is getting a grip on the basics. What I like to, okay, somebody, all right, Dan. Uh, what, we, what we like to call, I like to think of it as getting a grip on the basis of the Bible. Right? This is what that class teaches you. Then we got three more. We got the Holy Spirit class. All right. We got cleansing stream. All right, and inner healing. These classes give you access to freedom. They help you to know the person of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. They help you to renew your mind. They help you to receive great measures of freedom. And then Cruz, simply put, is a group of, a group of disciples getting together to grow in Christ. It's about 12 people in each crew, depending. And that's Cruz and Freedom Track for you. That's so good. That's so good. Uh, I, I, we heard plenty of testimonies to come out of Crew and Freedom Track. Uh, can you share like a couple of stories that have really birthed out of those places? Absolutely. Ooh, that's so many. Um, one in particular that uh, was shared with me was this particular crew was a co-ed crew, and it was multi-everything. Multi-everything, multi-class, multi-race, even uh, different lifestyles were in this particular crew. And during this particular season, they were able to talk about some really hard things. The media uh, was looking, uh, making, I mean, media was dealing with racism a great deal. And during this time, this particular crew was able to be there for each other, to talk about racism, to talk about how it hurt them, what it meant. They gained different perspectives from one another. And they learned to love each other. And these guys are still in friendship with each other. They text each other every week. They're talking to each other every week. And I think this was the season before last, but it just sat with me. So I think that's a, a testament of what crews can do. That's awesome. I heard a, a few hand claps out there. Can y'all make some noise if y'all got your own testimonies and stories yeah. Yeah. of what God has done inside of crew yeah. and freedom track? We got a lot of people out there that have experienced the same thing. Uh, it sounds great. Uh, so who is it catered for and what's the next steps? Because I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about it. And yeah. I want to I wanna yeah. do something. So, so what's like the next steps and who is it got catered you. for? Talk so we got us. a crew for everybody, right? We got seniors. We've got singles. Well, we've got seniors. We've got couples. We've got young adults. Um, we've, uh, young adults, make some noise. Young adults. Yeah, yeah. We've even got misfit um, crews as well. So... Uh, there is a crew for everyone. Um, the way to get signed up, and this is a uh, not a this is a grateful uh, a grace a grateful thing that I'm doing here is that today in the back of the sanctuary, some of our crew leaders and some of our freedom track leaders will be back there, so you can see them face to face, get to know them, give them a great big hug, some dap, and get a chance to sign up for their crew or their freedom track class today today. All right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's give it up for Miss Tanaka J, right. who is a uh, senior director. It's right there on the screen. If y'all want to take a moment to go ahead, you can start early. Just sign that, 
get your phone out and go to the QR code. Scan the QR code, you guys. It's starting the first week in February. It's officially starting then, but sign up starts today. Anybody excited about crew and freedom track season coming up? So dope. Hey, let's go ahead and pray for our offering. Uh, Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity uh, to sow these seeds into your kingdom. Uh, we thank you uh, for what you're going to do with it and the lives that are going to be saved and the lives that are going to be changed because of it. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, you guys, this is week number three of Fruitful. Uh, but here, uh, I'm going to kick it to a video here for a second. It's going to be a QR code. It's going to give you a moment to go ahead and scan it and possibly sign up for Crew and Freedom Track if you like. Then the next voice you are here, that'll be of our, one of our lead pastors, Pastor Sam Hamstra for Fruitful number three. Church, how y'all doing today? It is so good to see each and every one of you. Uh, if you don't know how to use the QR code, I just figured out a little while ago. You can just open up a web browser on your phone and go to weareanthemchurch.com and uh, all the information on how to do that as well. Uh, but you should register for my crew. All the, all the guys, where's all the men at in the house? Make some noise. Guys are a little quiet most of the time. But my crew's at 7 a.m. on Wednesday morning. We're done at 8 a.m. because that's what dudes do. We get in and out. We don't talk like all the women. We're in and out. In and out. Let's get right to the point. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. But good morning, everybody. I'm excited for what God is doing. It's been an amazing time here. If you're new here, my name is Sam. My wife Taylor and I have the wonderful honor and privilege of serving as your lead pastors here. Thank you all. And... Um, Excited what God is doing. Um, next weekend, just so you guys know, it's a, it's a special weekend. We've been in a special time uh, as we're continuing this time of 21 days of prayer and fasting. And uh, this is day number 14. So we're almost there. Um, I kind of get like a little tension here because it's been such a great time of prayer and fasting. So I'm excited for it to be done, but I don't want it to end at the same time. Um, but uh, so we're continuing this week. Uh, prayer meetings are at 6 a.m. to 7, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And then 9 a.m. on Saturday. I want to ask Anthem family, if at all possible, if you're able, if you could get to the building 9 a.m. on Saturday, uh, we're going to close out with a mega prayer meeting. And I can't wait for that. And then uh, don't forget Friday night, um, we're, we're, we're in a series right now we're doing called Fruitful. And uh, this is part number three today. Uh, we're going to hit pause next week. And uh, here's what we got going on next weekend. Friday night, something cool is going to happen. I'm not quite sure what that is yet. We're still trying to figure it out. And then uh, Sunday, uh, Pastor Tim Ross is going to be with us. Um, and we're excited for that. If you don't know who Tim Ross is, just Google him and you'll find out. He's, he's all over. We're blessed to have him. And uh, I would encourage you to get here next Sunday as well. And Friday is going to be a great time as well. But that's later. How many guys are ready for the word of the Lord today? Um, if you have a Bible, if you could, turn with me to John chapter 15. As I've been, if I just said, we're in a series of teaching right now, a, a, a group of teachings, a collection of messages about what it means to be fruitful. Fruitful is our word of the house for 2023. What we've been saying is we don't know what this year is going to hold, but we do believe it's going to be a fruitful year if you do what God says to do. So if you have a Bible, John chapter 15, if we could stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. Coming at you from the New King James Version. 
of the Bible. I'm going to read the text. I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to, I'm going to, there's a quiz right after I'm done, so pay attention. <laughs> John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Uh, this is actually the third week in a row been sharing from this text. But how many of you guys know we could stay in here for a long time? It's really, really good. John chapter 15, verse 1 through 8 says this. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Uh, we've been staying in verse number 2 the last two weeks. I want to progress a little bit further into the text today. It says this. You are, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as the branch is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Why is that? Because God can trust you when you spend time with him. And by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Are you ready for the pop quiz? What word shows up more than any other word in this text? Abide. <laughs> Abide. I want to try to talk to, um, I want to, to, to the seasoned saints in the house today. Um, anybody been following the Lord for a little while? Um, if you haven't, this, I, I do believe this is still going to be for you, but I want to speak to some people. What I believe God is speaking to us as a people, uh, what he really wants to bring us into and what's required of us today. And, and I do believe it might be a little different than we think. What God asked uh, for mature believers to walk into what's next. And so what I want to share with you under the heading this morning is pretty simple. It's under this line. It's up to you. It's up to you. Look at your neighbor and say, it's up to you. <laughs> now, now look at your other neighbor and say, it's up to me. It's up to me. It's, it's my decision. It's up, it's up to me. It's up to me. Let me pray. And I'm going to dive in. Lord, I thank you. Lord, that we're connected to you. Now help us to abide in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. In March of 2013, Pastor Jerry McQuay from Christian Life Center announced that he wanted to start a church in Northwest Indiana. And it was announced that Taylor and I were going to be leading the charge. Was anybody there when we started in 2013? Yep. About a dirty dozen of you. <laughs> and so we got to work recruiting a team. We launched in September of 2013 at the Munster Performing Arts Center. And looking back, I want to let you in on a little secret. We had no idea what we were doing. We kept on praying and praying and praying, and all we really knew what to do was lean on God. And as we leaned on God, God began to do what only God could do. And we began to go miraculously from no fruit to some fruit. Fast forward to 2016, we moved from Munster to Hammond into this facility. It didn't look anything like this. If you uh, came in the beginning, you understand it looked like a bomb went off in here. Um, it was not, did not look like this at all. But as we, when we moved to Hammond, we began moving from some fruit to more fruit. And then in 2020, uh, we transitioned to Anthem Church um, on the internet. And now we're celebrating three years of being Anthem this coming March. And um, we're, we're going to have a, a celebration in March of turning three. Uh, but since this time, God has really blessed us. We went from no fruit to fruit to quite a bit of fruit. I say that humbly this morning. But looking back to the beginning, though, I remember how nerve-wracking it was. How every day, all we could do was rely on God. There is a sense of desperation that when you show up, it's kind of like, Lord, I need you to do something because we can't do what we're asking you to do on our own. 
There wasn't a big team. We didn't really have any other choice. And I remember how much joy would come from the fruit God was producing. Like there would be one first time guest and we would be like, OMG, somebody is here. This is amazing. We went from 12 to 13. And there is this real tangible sense to the Lord, we can't do this without you. And when I saw this fruit that was coming forth, it was good. We were humbled. It brought much satisfaction. I remember thinking these words, Lord, who am I that you would use me, that you would use us to expand your kingdom? This is my story. Some of you are part of this story, but you have your own story too. I want you to think back when you first started something. Your career, when you first got married, when you first started ministering, parenting, whatever it might be, remember the time when you showed up and you had no idea what you were doing, and all you could do is lean on God. I like to think of it the difference between a first child and a second one. You know, when you first have your first child, all you can do is pray. By the time the second one rolls around, it's like I haven't seen them in three days. Are they okay? You know, like something changes, you know. By the time you're on your fourth, you're like, what's your name again? You know, like, <laughs> something changes. Um, and as you stay attached to God, though, maybe you can remember, I want you to think back to the beginning of a thing, but as you stay attached to God, it's amazing. When you stay attached to him, over time, you start to see some fruit. You start to see some success. You move up the ladder. Aren't you grateful that you get promoted? Your, your family increases and it's thriving. You don't live where you used to live. You got a home now. Your bank account, it might not be where you want it to be, but you at least got a bank account. What I'm trying to say is over time, your life starts producing some fruit. More than physical things, though, if you look at your life, there's something coming out of your life when you're attached to God over time that's glorifying God. There's some fruit attached to your life. So let me go back to that story I said about our church. We started doing ministry at here in 2013. But fast forward now 10 years later, um, we're blessed at Anthem. I was just, I say that humbly, but it's true. I was just telling one of my friends this morning, you, you weren't here before, but the whole back half of the room was a gym a year ago. Um, this wasn't always like this, and we're truly blessed. And something happened, though, about two months ago in my life that got to the core of something in my heart. I had been praying for something to happen here for 10 years. It, it sounds kind of funny to say out loud, but I just looked at it as a measure of influence. I was praying for a decade that we would break a certain amount of people on a weekend service gathered together here in Hammond, Indiana. And glory to God, in November of 2022, that number I had been praying for, for 10 years, it happened. Um, yeah, it was cool. I'd also been praying that we could give a certain amount of money away as a church. Well, in 2022, glory to God. It happened. <laughs> yeah. But I realized something. When this happened, I, was, I, I, I write these things down in a prayer journal, and I was doing strikethroughs. Like, God, you answered this prayer on this date. God, you answered this prayer on this date. And I thought I would feel something. But I realized the level of my joy and satisfaction didn't change. My level of joy and satisfaction in the fruit that my life was producing did not increase. It stayed the same, if not decreased. And in fact, my satisfaction level went down a little bit. If I were to be honest with you, which I'm gonna be, in November of this past year, I thought there was something wrong with me. Because what I had prayed for happened, and I felt kind of bored. <laughs> what I was praying for was happening, and I felt kind of blah. I actually felt like maybe my time here, it's time for me to move on because I don't get the satisfaction out of the fruit that I've been praying for anymore. Can I, can I tell the truth? So I called some people that were trusted advisors in my life. I said, I don't know what's going on, but I just don't find the satisfaction I used to find. And I'm glad they kind of talked me into some things and talked me out of some things. But I started asking this question, why am I feeling this way? Something must be wrong with me. But perhaps you see this today in your own life too. Where at one time something gave you great joy. And seeing it brought great contentment when you saw it in your life. But now that you got it, 
Can you be honest with yourself? Now it's kind of bland. It's almost a little tasteless. Like you prayed for the career and you got it. Cool. I'm talking to successful people. I'm not dismissing your family, but you prayed for the family and you got it. And the family picture is cute. But it's like, okay, God, I prayed for it and it happened and it's here. Like you prayed to be deaf free. You even went through Dave Ramsey's class. You even got an emergency fund. But yet you're still not fulfilled. You did what God said and now you have some fruit coming out of your life, but yet something is missing. Am I talking to anybody today? And you hunger for more, but you don't even know what more is. And so maybe you're like me and you think more fruit will fix it. So you work harder, you work longer, thinking if I could produce more fruit, my life will be better. But you find yourself going to work and pushing and grinding. You, you, you go so hard at work and in your life, you don't even know what you did during the day. And you get home and you feel like you didn't actually produce anything. Your bed hits the pillow and you do it again the next day. And all of a sudden it's 2023. Yep. And it's interesting, you know, you just kind of come into this place in the season. You're left kind of wondering, am I the only one? Is this it? No. Like, what, what really do you have next, God? Like, I'm here. Is my life really this week supposed to look like I wake up, I read my devotion, I bring my kid to school, he comes home from school, I go to work, we eat, we do the dishes, I take him everywhere because I'm his Uber driver apparently. <laughs> and then you wake up on Tuesday and do the same thing all over again until the other side of glory and meanwhile, I'm going to know Christ, I'm going to make him known a little bit, but Lord, is there anything else? Like, what, what, what does next look like? What, what's next, God? And a few months ago, and I'm going somewhere, I'm just trying to build it up. You got to stay with me just for one minute, okay? A, a few months ago, when I'm going through this, I believe through the power of the Holy Spirit, God began dealing with me on this topic. And I started studying, like, what does it really mean to live a fruitful life? And God led me to this book called Secrets of the Vine by a guy named Bruce Wilkinson. It's a very short read. Um, but I've, I've gleaned a lot of revelation, shared a lot of revelation that I gleaned from that book in this last three weeks. And um, I want to give credit where credit is due. It's called, Bruce, uh, it's called Secrets of the Vine by Bruce Wilkinson. But he tells a story that really got to the core, I think, of where a lot of us are. And I wanted to kind of share what he said. He said he led a ministry that was substantial. But all of a sudden, he was driving down the road one day. And all of a sudden, he just felt empty. It was substantial, it's growing, but all of a sudden what he used to take great joy in, now the joy wasn't there. And he tells this story of how he didn't know what to do, so he prayed and the Lord led him to, to a Christian coach. And so he prayed and God led him to this coach and he goes to this leadership coach, he tells him exactly how he was feeling and before he could even finish, this Christian coach says to him, why don't you just stop right there? And the coach tells him, listen, I've studied over 500 different Christian leaders, some biblical, some historical, some modern people. And the guy said, Bruce, you're right on schedule. And the guy said, right on schedule for what? And this Christian coach holds up two hands and he goes, this represents the two levels of fulfillment in your life. In the right hand is when you find fulfillment in God. In this hand is when you find fulfillment in what your life and the fruit you're producing. And he says, this hand right here is your competence. This, this is what God has given you, your gifting. And what happens when you first start off in the Christian journey and you're doing what God says? How many of you know all you can do is rely on God? Why? Because you don't have any competence, tell the truth. You don't even know what your gifting is, tell the truth. You don't even know what to do. So all I can do is lean on God. Yeah. But the longer that I walk with God, the longer that I serve God, all of a sudden what happens is you ought to be getting better at what you do. Uh -huh. it, it should be a natural progression. Yeah. If I had more time, maybe we could talk about it. It's kind of an issue if you're not better this year than you were last year. You know, like we ought to be growing in what we do. And so he tells the story. So when you first start off, it's up here, right? Your relationship with God. But all of a sudden, you're finding contentment and satisfaction in God. But over time, what happens is you start finding contentment and satisfaction in what your life is producing by the gifts God has given you. And so this starts raising up. But what happens is you don't rely on God as much anymore. Why? Because I don't need to because now I'm gifted. Now I have some competence. Can I tell the truth? We got a gifted team here at Anthem Church. I reminded our team this morning, we could do all this without the power of the Holy Spirit if we wanted to, but I just choose not to. 
because it won't mean anything. But, but over time, what happens is, and you see, that's where the spirit gets quenched. Because we're so competent, we don't have to rely on God. Am I talking to some su- successful people? So this comes up, this comes down. And you're going to come to a point in your life, what this guy was laying out, that the choice is up to you. When you get to this level in your life, you can continue to rely on yourself. Or you can drop it all and put all your reliance in God once again. The choice is up to you. Your focus, he was saying, to get to the next level has to once again be on Christ, not on the fruit you're producing or you're going to go in the wrong direction, which will lead you in a downward spiral. And let me just say this. This is a stage in your life where you need to watch it. When you're producing is when you need to watch it. When you're moving in your gifts and anointing is when you need to watch it. You want to know why? Because here's why. This is where I tell you all this story, and this is where I'm going this morning. What I've realized is that sometimes we're so gifted and we have so much experience, it's actually quite possible, if you're not careful, where you begin to find satisfaction in what your life is producing and not the one who gave you the fruit that it's producing. And I want to talk to some people who have found some success today. Because it's quite possible in our lives where we begin to rely on ourselves rather than rely on God. It's quite possible on our lives when you're so gifted that you begin to rely and find satisfaction in the fruit rather than the fruit giver. And God wants to remind us this morning, when you begin to find satisfaction in the wrong source, you know what immediately happens? You begin to operate at something called self-sufficiency. And I'm coming to find out That if you're not intentional, I'm not intentional, there's a subtle shift that happens in believers when we begin to rely more on gifting than the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, that is the moment that religion is born in the body of Christ. When we can do it on our own and I don't need God. There's another word for that. You know what it is in the Bible? Pride. When we operate independently apart from God. And it's in this place where you're fruitful but lacking satisfaction that many go and throw more energy into work. Like I feel this way, so let me work more. Yeah, I'm going to say something a little strong, but some of you have been here. It's at the same exact place where you're no longer satisfied, where you begin to look for satisfaction outside your marriage. It's the very place that your marriage is split apart because you start hollering at some chick and sliding in DMs that you're never supposed to slide into. Because my wife doesn't satisfy me, but if God doesn't, the problem's not with your wife, it's with you. You got to lean on God. It's quiet in here. <laughs> this is the very place, though, if you're not careful, where you're going to try to perform your way to feel better. And God is saying it actually requires a better decision. I want to put this in terms of our text for the day in John 15. Jesus here teaching us the way of the vine dresser. I want to tell you the decision. How many of you guys want to move to the next level of God this year? Uh, let, let me get there. Let me show you in the text. Three main characters. God, the vine dresser. Jesus, the vine we see in the text. Who's the source. And what are we? We've been talking about we're the branches. And what we see here in this text is the process, the way that God our Father moves us into fruitfulness in our life. And we've been talking about these three levels of fruitfulness. What are we talking about? None to some. And what does God do? He disciplines you in a way that leads you to repentance. He lifts you up, cleans you off, so you can start to produce some fruit. Level two is quantity to quality. How does God get you there? God loves you so much, he'll cut you. (laughs) He'll prune you, cut you back, it says in verse two, so that you can produce more fruit. So this brings us to where we are today. When you're not being lifted up in discipline, you're not being pruned, but you're caught up between two tensions. An increasing desire to produce more fruit and a decreasing fulfillment in the fruit you're already producing. And that's where God has us sometimes before he's about to move us to the next level. And this takes us to the third level and ultimately where God desires to bring each of us in our lives is good to abundant. Anybody want to live an abundant life in the kingdom? I'm not talking about abundance when it comes to resource. I'm not talking about abundance when it comes to money. I'm talking about an abundance of fruit that's coming out of your life that is visible, that is glorifying God. That, that's the ultimate goal God has for us on this earth, that we will produce so much that we will live abundant lives. This is a picture of Jeremiah 17, of the tree planted by the river that's always green, always producing, no matter the season. 
This is the picture of good to abundant. Now, if you want to live an abundant life, here's what you got to understand. Who, who's ready to go to level three? How many of you guys are really ready for an abundant life? All right, here's the truth of the text. You ready? God doesn't want you to do more for him. God wants you to be with him more. It's up to you. Which one do you choose? You have to choose where you're going to find your source of satisfaction. Your next level, Anthem Church, people here, is not a destination. Your next level is a person. Your next level as a people is not something new. Could it be that it's something deeper? That my next level in Christ is not producing fruit and more accolades. It's about more Christ. That your next level in Christ is not about jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, because all that is empty without Christ. It's about Matthew 6 and 33, to seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all this rest of this stuff shall be added to you. In fact, Jesus shows us in John 15, the answer to your problems is not even found by working directly on your problem. It's actually found by shifting your focus to spend more time with somebody else. And I want you to picture the grapevine. John 15, too, what we see is God lifts it up, cleans it off, ties it to the trellis. God prunes it back now so it can produce more. Now, now how many of you have been through a, a rebuking from God? God disciplined you to re- lead you. Anybody? Um, that's how God kind of gets your attention, so you repent. Then God will prune you. Anybody been pruned by God before? All right. Now, am I the only one? I thought after God did that, like God's going to give me a pattern that's super simple and clean. Like, okay, now you're ready. Here's the plan. It's going to be systematic. It's going to make sense. And God is like, well, no, 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 let me tell you the plan. Here's the plan. You ready? I'm like, okay, God, you did this. You pruned me. I felt it. What's next? Verse 4. Abide in me. What's the play, God? Abide in me. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Don't miss the last line, for without me, you can do nothing. Jesus is saying here, if you want your life to produce an abundance of fruit, a life that's marked by what God is glorifying God, a life that is marked by the fruit of the Spirit, of love, joy. Anybody want a life of peace, patience, gentleness, self-control? If you want these things, here's the key. You ready? God says, abide in me. And if you're anything like me, can, can we tell the truth? This sounds a little off. The math doesn't make sense. I want to know how. I want to know why. God, could you show me what? God says, why don't you start by focusing on who? God says, I don't want you to do more for me. I actually want you to spend more time with me. Because God knows something that unfortunately a lot of us have learned. That the longer you do this, it's easy to substitute professional ministry for personal devotion. I'm going to rewind that and say it again. Now, when I say professional ministry, I mean what God has called you to in your life. It's easy to substitute your professional life for personal devotion. So God says we need to flip this a little bit because one of the biggest traps that you can fall into is we let what we do for God become more important than our relationship with God. And I don't know about you, I never want to get to a point where I'm a professional minister, but I got a lousy relationship with Christ. I'm a... I'm a great preacher, but an awful friend. It's not what we ever want in our lives. And some of you know what I'm talking about, though, how this works. Because I'm asking the question, how does less for him to spend more time with him work? Because it doesn't make sense. When I take my hand off something, all of a sudden I'm going to produce more of something. It doesn't make sense in the natural Um, but I don't serve a natural God. But it does make sense in the supernatural. And maybe you could help me out this morning. If something happens when I spend time with God, that God supernaturally multiplies my efforts. You took your hands off of it, and all of a sudden you are praying and spending time with God, and God fixed it. 
that there was a door that was closed. Am I the only one? I didn't know what to do. And I said, God, I'm going to give it to you. And all of a sudden the phone rang. God, I didn't know where to go. And all of a sudden I got a word. Yeah. That's how God works. You take your hand off. And God says, now I can produce that which I want to do when you get in this quiet place with me. That's the way God works. And in 10 different times, in the first 16 verses of John 15, Jesus uses this word abide. Abide is John's word. Anybody want to know what it really means? It's his word for intimacy. When John talks about getting closer to Jesus, experiencing more of Jesus, and moving from a life of good to abundant, John says we first, must first learn to abide. What does it mean to abide? The Greek word is the word meno, M-E-N-O. It means to stay, to loiter, to remain, to hang out. Jesus is saying, if you want to look like me, you got to hang out with me. Jesus here is talking to his disciples, and you got to watch this. He's not telling them how to be saved. He's telling them how to live an abundant life, and here it is, abide. And a lot of people, can we be honest, we like to visit Jesus. I like to visit him on Sunday. I like to visit him at the prayer meeting when I need something. But he's coming to us today and saying, I'm not looking for somebody to visit. I'm looking for somebody that knows how to abide. Jesus is saying, listen, I'm not your supplement. I'm your source. Jesus is coming in and saying, listen, church, I'm not your sugar daddy. I'm your savior. He's coming in and he's saying, listen, I, I, I'm looking for a people that just don't want to date me. I'm looking for a people that are going to marry me, put a ring on me, be in covenant with me. That's what it means to abide. And Jesus says, you really want to produce much fruit? Abide in me. What does that really mean? Let me, let me try to give you a picture of what this means. So I'm, I was asking the Lord, help me make this plain, right? Abiding sounds super churchy. And so let me, let me try to break this down. Um, like the whole month of December, I had the sinus infection, and, and I couldn't talk. I'm, right now, I can't talk because I've never talked more in my life because we we've been praying a lot. So. But I had the sinus infection, and so people were coming up to me. I love our team. They're like, you need to drink some tea. And I'm not a tea drinker. I'm a coffee drinker. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so I don't know anything about tea. It's like, tea's for soft people. I don't need tea. <laughs> tea. Just give me some black coffee, you know? And uh, so I don't know anything about tea. And so I found out when I had this sinus infection, there's kind of, my brother's a big tea drinker. I, I make fun of him all the time. Like, you got your fancy little mug, bro? You know, like. <laughs> so I found out there's, there's really two different kinds of tea drinkers. And, and I don't know what I'm doing. So what I do when I get a tea bag is I put some hot water in there. Then I get the tea and I dip it. There's, there's tea drinkers who dip it. You go in and you go out trying to get it in there quick. You know what the problem is? Is that we got too many dippers in the body of Christ. I, I, I come in and dip back out. Uh, I'm going to come in on Sunday, I dip back out. We, we dip. I, I want to dip in and then I dip out. I, I dip into Jesus, but I leave Jesus here and I dip out to my job. Dip in and dip out. And then though, you see what I learned from my brother when I watch him drink his tea in his fancy little mug, is he puts the tea in there and he leaves it in there. You see, he's not a dipper, he's an abider. And so he puts the tea in that mug and he leaves it alone. And what happens is the stronger, the longer that the tea is in the water, the more that the tea permeates what's around it. The longer that the tea is in the water, the stronger that it is. The longer that the tea abides in the water, the more that the water is affected. God is looking for some people who are not dippers. He's looking for some people that will abide with him. That's what abiding looks like. You got a lot of people who dip. Dip in, dip out. 
They're, they're not here today, so I'm going to say it. Okay, so why? Because they dipped out. You know, that's what happened. You know, like. But what happens a lot of times, I wish I was lying because it happens. You know, like what happens, and, and I've been doing this now for 10 years, so I, you can see cycles in people's life. It, God is here to break a cycle today. Listen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, because people walk into the house of God because they need something. They dip in. Because God is their sugar daddy. Right? That's what dippers do. And how many guys know God is still faithful? I don't know why God answers prayers sometimes the way he does, but he does. And so they dip in. They get what they need and dip out. But then their life falls apart because apart they're not connected to the source. So then all of a sudden they dip in and dip out. It's like, didn't I just pray for you at the altar for the same exact thing last year? But, but God is looking for some abiders. God is teaching us as a people this year that it's not about more. It's not about producing more fruit on our own. God is teaching us, will you abide in me? And the depth of your abiding will determine the rate of your progress in your spiritual life. And you got to understand this. This is why the text is, it, it, it's, it's interesting because we've been talking about this now. I've been preaching on this for the last three weeks. There's a complete 180 shift from verse 2 to verse 3. And sometimes we look right past it. So what do I mean by that? The first two levels of fruitfulness that we've been talking about, and don't miss this because this is super important. The first two levels is all about God coming to you. God will come to you to rebuke you because he loves you that much. That's the first work of the Holy Spirit to convict you of your sin. That's God's move. God is the one who chooses what needs to be pruned, not you. The problem is when we prune things on our own that God doesn't think we need to be pruned and then we never deal with the root of the issue. So God is the one who initiates the pruning. But in verse 3, here's the, here's the reality. It's fully up to you. God doesn't initiate this. He said, here's the invitation. It's actually a command in Scripture. Why is it a command? A com you have to command somebody to do something. Why? Because it won't come naturally. I don't have to command my son, eat that dessert. Right? No, he does it naturally. Why is this a command to, to, to abide? Because God knows that it does not come naturally. He's going to say, you're going to try to take your life in your own hands. You're going to go touch things. You're going to try to grow yourself. But here's what I want in my kingdom. Choose to abide in me. It's up to you. Will you be a dipper or an abider? Now let me try to make something real plain in the next Man, my clock goes faster every single week. <laughs> I'm trying to make something real plain real quick, okay? Because I'm like asking the Lord, what, is a, what does abiding look like on Tuesday morning? How can we get this deep into the lifeblood of our church where we move from a good life to an abundant life? How can we get this so deep where the fruit your life is producing, where there's thousands of people at Anthem Church glorifying God wherever God placed them? I'm telling you, we'll turn the world upside down if we get this right. So I was asking the Lord, like, why? Well, what does this look like? What does it mean to abide? Let me give you three real quicks, uh, quick keys on what you need to know about living an abundant life. I'm going to hit these quick. You guys ready? They all start with the letter P because that's what preachers do. We... <laughs> three keys. You ready? To get this right, first thing, the first key is the person of abiding. The person. you got to get the person right. John 15 and 4. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Now think about this. Think about a branch. Um, if I were holding a branch right now, imagine if I were holding a branch in my hand and it's just a branch. It's not attached to anything. And I'm like, all right, church, here's what we're going to do. We're going to decree and declare right now. That fruit appear on this branch. We decree. Come on, command it. Command it right now in the name of Jesus. Do you know how dumb we would look? The only way I can get fruit to be attached to a branch that's not attached to a tree, to a trunk, is I could tape it on. I can attach it so it looks like it's there, but it's not real. I can fake it for a season. But the only way this branch will start producing if it's attached to the source and that's what this text is teaching us. Who's who in this text? Jesus is the trunk. Jesus is the vine. What happens when a branch is attached to a vine? Something flows forth called sap. Mm -hmm. 
Sap is what gives the branch nutrients. Sap is what actually produces fruit. It's called sap. Can I tell you what the sap is for a believer? The Holy Spirit. When I'm connected to Jesus, the vine, the Spirit of God is released in my life to produce that. What needs to be produced, but you have to be attached to the vine. Jesus is kind of pointing out to us how ridiculous we might look when we're not with him. When we're not abiding with him, trying to do things on our own. And we're going to go to work and work and work, but you'll never produce that which you're supposed to produce. Verse 5, he goes on and says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Now here's a dangerous question. Do you believe what the Bible says? What Jesus is saying is like, this isn't like a a 50-50 kind of thing. He's saying, those who abide in me, if you believe what I'm going to say, guaranteed. You're going to produce that. which It's a guarantee. And Jesus says, you abide in me, I'll produce, you'll produce much fruit. And I struggle with this. Can we be honest? Because I see people doing amazing things. And sometimes I feel like my fruit is delayed. And so I, sometimes I try to do what I, need, I know I need to do. And so I think I'm going to work to get fruit. And that's the moment where you cancel the fruit in your life. When you're looking at everybody else's fruit and Jesus is saying, I want you to abide in me to produce something. But we look at everybody else and say, I want what they have and we get off track. Sometimes our issue, I'm going to talk to myself right now, is that I worship accomplishment and not worship Jesus sometimes. We, we worship fruit. We don't worship Jesus. So how do we do this? How do we practically abide? Well, the beginning point of abiding, how many of you know is salvation? Where's all the Christians at? This is what it looks like to get attached to the source. All right. Now, now notice this. Um, I, I've been saying this more and more, but I, I want to make sure we get this as a church. I want, to, I want you to notice that I didn't say when you get attached to a church. You, you can go through membership class and still not be attached to the vine. you you got to be attached to Christ. And once you're saved, abiding is, is here's what it's really about, remaining, hanging out. It's the most important friendship of your life, Jesus Christ. And when you abide, you seek, you long for, you, you thirst, you know, you love, you respond to this friendship of Jesus. Let me try to paint a picture of what this looks like. Taylor and I, for uh, Taylor turned 41, we, we celebrate age in our house, like getting older. And um, well, for Taylor's 40th birthday, we did a little getaway. We went to this, this cool all-inclusive place without our child. And it was great. And uh, just the two of us. And the only thing on the agenda for a week was we're going to abide. We're going to hang out. We're going to eat together. We're going to walk together. We're going to talk together. We're going to cry together. Even when we're together, I know you so well, we don't even need to talk. We're just going to, we're going to abide. We're going to hang out. There's no other agenda. I'm just going to be. I'm just going to hang. Can I tell you, that's what abiding looks like when you're with your friend with no other agenda. I just want to be with you. I just want to spend time with you. I just want to walk with you. Wherever you're going, I want to go. Wherever I go, I'm taking you with me. That's what abiding Looks like, you know where a lot of people get in trouble, uh, trouble is that we don't want to take Jesus with us where we're going. Right? you got to abide. And then the other real reason we get in trouble is because we go places that Jesus never let us to go. And so this is what abiding looks like. David understood this. The one who's known as a man after God's own heart where he says this in Psalm 42 and 1, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul for you, O God. David said in Psalm 27 and 4, one thing I have desired of the Lord was that you'll bless me. No, he didn't say that. One thing I desire of God is that you'll hook me up. He didn't say that. One thing I desire of the Lord is that you'll give me a new house. Didn't say that. One thing I desire of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David says, this is the one thing I want, God. I don't want bigger. I don't want better. I don't want to move. I don't want to go. The one thing I want, God, is you. You know what? He's saying everything else will work itself out. David prayed this. The one thing I ask, the one thing, Lord, The one desire I have in my life is you. If I got a transcript 
of all your prayers from 2023, what would it show you the one thing you asked for? Would it be if I was reading the transcript of your prayers? Man, here is one who knows Jesus, who is all about Jesus. They just want to know Jesus more. Jesus, the one thing I want is just to know you more. Jesus, I want to be in your presence. I want to bask in your glory. Lord, I don't want anything else. I just want you. What, do you, what does your prayer say about you? You know what I've been trying to shift our prayer meetings to? When we come in here and here's the main agenda, we're going to abide. We're going we're to spend time with God. What, what does worship look like? I'm just going to sit here with the Lord. I'll, I want to spend time with you, Lord. Now, now to break through in this, here's the key. You've got to pursue Jesus daily. Pursuing him daily ought to be at the top of the list in your life. I know how many of us, we pursue a lot of things. But Jesus has to come first. Matthew 6 and 33 has to be real. We've got to get that right. First key to abiding is the person. I'm going to hit these next two really, really quick. Then you've got to understand, number two, the principles of abiding. The principles. And this is, goes beyond, um, sometimes I think we've done a disservice when we leave it at this, like, you, you need to do your daily devo. <laughs> you know, like, do your devotion. And, and how many of you know that's important? I don't think Jesus' intention, though, for us was to go to our version apps and hit a checkbox and move on with our day. And I'm saying that this is the next level. You got to start somewhere. But sooner or later, you got to go from devotion to devoted. Yeah. Devoted means to be set apart. And what am I trying to say? You can read the Bible for years and have a consistent devotion and still never abide. Because reading a book about a person isn't the same thing as knowing the one who wrote the book. Reading the book, I will, um, about the person is not the same thing as knowing the one who wrote the book. And this is where a lot of religious activity is birthed in our lives. This is where people will take the Bible and use it as a book of hate because they don't know the author who wrote it is a God of love. And you see this twisted so many different times. And we need to see this and understand this. We need to not only know the words, we need to know the author of the words, else we'll misconstrue the context of what's being said. And you got to get this on, on, on the principles, okay? Here's the first principle to break through to abiding. You must first deepen the quality of your devoted time. To be devoted is to set, be set apart. Now, um, how many of you are, are nighttime people? You love the night? Where's all the morning people? Yeah? That's why you guys are at the 9 o'clock service. <laughs> the 11 o'clock is like, yeah, I'm night. Um, and I love, I love the 11 o'clock. And um, here's what you got to understand. And you guys can check me on this. I've never met somebody in my life personally whose temperature is so spiritually hot I've never met anybody that's very hot that does not have a really good morning routine with the Lord. Yeah. Got really quiet in here. But you, gotta, um, and you guys can check me on that, but I personally never met anybody. The Bible doesn't clearly say, like, you've got to spend time first thing in the morning. But I think it does say seek first the kingdom of God. Yeah. And to me, I think just very practically that it looks like seeking first what matters most every single day. Right. And here's what I'm trying to say. If you really want to get to this place of abide, it's going to require something. Solitude, quiet, alone time with God. Si silent, solitude, alone time with God. And when you're in this place, it helps to have a plan. Um, some people can do this. I, I really can't. Like you just crack open the Bible. Where are we going today, God? That's great. I, I like to have a reading plan so I can read through. Uh, so my plan looks like a reading plan. Some good coffee, glory to God. I did tea for a season. I dipped out. And uh, <laughs> uh, I like to journal. I want to I challenge the church uh, to begin doing a spiritual journal. What would it look like for the next week just to write a spiritual journal, a, a letter to God? What is that? If you might not know what it is, write a letter to God. Um, here's what your first letter might look like. God, I don't know what to say to you. And you might be following the Lord for a while and say, I don't even know who you are anymore because I left you. Whatever it might be, but write out. Just make it simple, right? Uh, but you need to deepen that time. And then the second thing that you got to do is move from an appointment to an all-day meeting. Um, a devoted life is not one where you come into your prayer closet and check out with God. Yeah. It means, Jesus, I'm going out in my day. I want you to come with me. I want you to go where I'm going. Come with me to work. Come with me to my job. Come with me to work. All right, come with me wherever I'm going, Jesus. I, uh, I want you to be with me. And last thing, the problem, I want to go over a couple of just real quick problems we have with abiding. Um, 
Because here's what I was asking. If we know, anybody know we need to abide? Yes. Right? It's a pretty clear biblical command. So here's the question I was asking. It's like, well, why don't more of us abide? Why, why do many people not get to an abundant life? Uh, first, I think if we were to be honest with ourselves, is a lack of focus. Um, you ever hang out with someone and while you're talking, they're on their phone the whole time? Yes. Like they'd be texting like you know they're not paying attention to you. I wonder how God feels in our devotions when we p- pick everything up. It's like I just got to hang on, God. I know, I know you're right here with me, but hang on. I got something else better to do. Um, we need to increase our focus. You know how you increase your focus? I wish there was a spiritual, like really we could command focus to come right now. Um, but how many of you know it's a discipline? There, there's no spiritual anointing for discipline. It's a choice you make to wake up and do it every single day and grow in it. Um, another reason why is we focus on feelings. A um, couple things with this that we got to understand with feelings. I, I, I went into what I went in last week on purpose because uh, sometimes... Here's what I found out. When God takes you through a process in your life sometimes, you'll never actually want to spend time with someone who you don't like. And if you're to be honest, and and I've been trying to get this place more and more in my life, is I don't really want to hang out with God when I'm angry. Like, God, you kind of let me down, you know? But this is where a lot of problems come when we really just focus on our feelings. Another thing that we got to understand is, I think I'm dead set on this too, that I, I think a lot of people don't really think God likes us. Like we understand God loves me. He died for me, but God, why you actually want to know what's going on in my life? I think a lot of people don't really comprehend that God actually truly loves you and likes you, wants to know about you. Another thing with feelings is sometimes we think that we haven't got to this place of abiding until we're like boohoo crying. And can I, can I speak to the dudes real quick? This is why sometimes like we sing songs and we don't do it a lot here, which I'm grateful, but we're talking about like sloppy wet kisses and like, it's just like, dude, like this... Feels a little off to my masculinity, you know. Like, <laughs> and so, like, sometimes we think abide and we think we got to go in this place and get all weepy and cry every time, but that's not abiding. Can, can, can I tell you? I think one of the clearest pictures of what it really looks like to abide is the covenant of marriage. Um, I, here, here's a reality, and married people, help me out. I don't like Taylor the same way all the time. I love you, but I like her different when we're fighting compared to when we're on a date night. Come on, somebody, help me. You guys are leaving me hanging out here. You know, I don't, like, I love you, but there's days and hours. It's like, yeah, work through some stuff, you know? But, but, no, days, days. <laughs> um, but here's the reality. When we first got married, we banned the word divorce in our home. And here's why. Be, because that's off the table. Why? Because I'm not in a relationship based on my feelings. I'm in a relationship based on covenant. Yes. And so no matter what happens, good or bad or in between, whether they're where, where, here's the reality. I ain't going anywhere. I'm staying here. That's what it means to abide with God. You might not like him right now. You don't want to be there. Or you're, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Either way, I show up and I'm here with you right here, right now. That's what abiding looks like. With God. Yes, sir. And, and I think one issue we have, and I know this isn't a marriage speech, but let me just say it, in kingdom marriages, is we forget the word covenant and make decisions based on temporary feelings. Yeah. Amen. I'm moving on. Yeah. Last problem we have is lack of faith. Faith is a verb. Faith moves. Faith without works is dead. You can't keep abiding with God if you don't do what God says. There is a break and breach of a relationship when one is disobedient. And as God began to show me this, this is why I got really excited. I don't have to argue with people when you want to come and say, I can do this and I can do this. Okay, well, are you going to obey God or not? That will dictate the level of the fruit in your life. I'm not the one that has to tell you the Holy Spirit will. And you got to follow what God is saying to you. And if God tells you to do something, you don't do it. That will breach your relationship and you can't abide because you gotta, you got to be obedient to keep on abiding. Amen? Yeah. All right, so let me close. This is my one and only close. I'm out of time. Somebody just said hallelujah. I'm done. <laughs> you know, as I was praying into what to say today, I really sensed this isn't like a shouting message, right? Like if you want to produce that which God has... We want to be like, here's the miracle equation, one, two, three. 
God says, here's the miracle, miracle equation. Get with me. Okay. Bars. I just came up with that right now. <laughs> here's the takeaway. God doesn't want you to do more for him. God wants you to be with him more. Anthem Church, God wants to change the spiritual temperature of your life. Here's what you got to understand. Um, I found this out this week and studied the planet Mercury. Do you know that Mercury is always hot? It's always hot on the planet Mercury. I didn't know this. Why is that? The location to the sun. The planet Pluto, on the other hand, is always cold. Why is that? Because the location to the sun is further away. You know what I found out about the earth? Is it seasonal? Why? Because it, it rotates. And so sometimes it's hot and sometimes it's cold. Anthem Church, here's what I believe God is calling us to do as a people. He's calling us to raise our spiritual temperature. To move from dip into abiding. To move from a little to a lot. To move from this place of good to now abundant. And in order to move into this, can I tell you, you got to leave Pluto behind. Anthem Church, we got to leave the earth behind. We got to be people that reside on Mercury right next to the sun, the S O N, so it can change our temperature if we want to keep on abiding with Him. For those who abide with Him will produce much fruit. Does anybody believe it today? Can we lift high the name of Jesus? Can you all stand to your feet in the house today? If you're ready to move from good to abundant in your life, can you just raise your hands? I just want to pray for you and we're done. Pastor Christian's coming to close us out this morning. I want to challenge you to whatever the Lord is saying to you about abiding. Did God speak to anybody today? I just want to pray. Holy Spirit, um, help us to be obedient to what you want us to do. Lord, I thank you. Um, that you've been shifting us. Lord, you've been moving us. Lord, you've been taking us. We're, we're, we're just not in a season of fruitfulness. We're in a lifestyle of fruitfulness. Lord, where we're not going to go from producing one way to producing another way, another season. Lord, that we're going to be continually producing the fruit that you called us to produce. Why? Because we're attached to you, the source. Our, we want to hang out with you. We want to abide with you. We want to be with you. Lord, we want to know you not just by name. I want to know you intimately, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you do the work over the hearts of your people right now. Lord, help us not just know the words of the Bible. Lord, help us to get to know the author of the Bible. Lord, we love you. Lord, we give you all the praise, and we give you all the glory, and we give you all the adoration. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that that abiding spirit, Lord, rest on your people today so we can walk into abundance with you. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody says amen and amen. Give it up for Pastor Christian to come close us out. Amen. Hey, make some noise if you receive that word today. Amazing, amazing word. Hey, we're going to get you out of here in the next 45 seconds or so. Uh, if any time during this service uh, where you had an inkling, where you want to know more about Jesus and even dedicate your life, uh, we have a big sign that says, I said yes to Jesus. And we would love to meet you right there at this sign to tell you about your next steps and your relationship with the Lord. Can we give it up for our first time guests one more time, you guys? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, thank y'all so much for hanging out with us again. Uh, we would love to meet you right outside these doors. Uh, and just as a quick reminder of our next step is Crew and Freedom Track uh, sign up begins today. Uh, for more information, please go to our website at We Are Anthem Church backslash, excuse me, forward slash next steps, and you'll get all the information about crew and freedom track. And we have some people in the back that can answer some questions as well. All right, I'm going to send you out with a blessing today. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for today. We received your word, and we're looking forward to the abiding and not dipping. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May he lift up his continents upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys have a phenomenal day. Our prayer team will be right here at the foot of the stage if you're in need of prayer. See you guys real soon.